What's up everybody? So I figured this video is going to be kind of like my daily um, vlog style video. Um, today I woke up and packaged all the orders from last night and any orders that came in this morning before I left. I just left the post office and I'm going to head and get a cup of coffee and continue my day and I'll take you along with me. Gotta get my Dunkin'. All right, I got my Dunkin' coffee. Now it's off to Tractor Supply Store. I need to get some sand for the bed racks. So I'm, I'm on my way to Tractor Supply and uh, I just wanna say it's like super beautiful out today. Um, it's a little cloudy, but it's mostly sunny and th there's a ton of trees that have come into bloom. It must have been just within the last couple of days because the whole freeway is just lined with these beautiful white trees right now. So it's kind of a little bit of a spirit booster uh, seeing this right now, being that I've been indoors most of the week um, trying to get projects done and stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll keep moving along. All right, I'm here. Let me go grab this sand. All right, this is that black diamond. It's blasting sand. Um, it's supposed to be black, but something spilled out. It doesn't really look black to me, but I'll give it a shot. I've never used it. I've heard of people using it online, and um, I'll give it a shot. All right, so I'm leaving Tractor Supply um, in case, oh geez, that's a big bump. Um, those bags are 50 pounds a piece. And they're like just under 10 bucks. I think they're like $9.99 or something. I think after tax, it was like 22 bucks for 100 pounds of sand. And like I said, it doesn't, it didn't look black. It's definitely dark. We'll see what it looks like once I get it out. I typically use pool filter sand, which is more white. Um, but I wanted dark with these betas because I think it would kind of make their colors pop. Um, so I'm giving it a shot. I've never tried it, but you know, I'll show when I do another beta rack update, I'll, I'll show the sand in that. But now I'm heading to my day job uh, at the shop. I'm off this week, but I need to put the finishing touch on the Ohio Fish Rescue Rack. So that's where I'm heading now. All right, I made it to work. Here's the stand for OFR, finishing touch. Made in the USA, built for Ohio Fish Rescue by SC Aquatics. This is going to go on the inside, kind of a manufacturer plate that I kind of just got bored and made. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, I think we'll mount this plate right there on the inside of this rack.
This hand's got to come out today. You're in your truck, then. Yeah. Alright, the stand's loaded up. I was supposed to uh, get this tomorrow for Ohio Fish Rescue, but I figured since I was here today, I would just go ahead and load it up, and that way I don't have to come into work tomorrow. Uh, just a single strap just to get home. I only live a couple miles away from the shop, and I'll strap, I'll put more straps on it tomorrow, but I mean, it's not going anywhere. So, one more thing off my to-do list done. I'm gonna get out of here and go work on the uh, better wreck. Alright, so I just filled up. Um, I wasn't planning on grabbing the stand today, but I figured since I was at work, it just made sense to go ahead and load it up. And um, so I did that, and I had over half a tank in the truck, and I decided to top it off. That way, tomorrow I don't have to do it. To go to OFR and back, I typically use a full tank of gas in the truck. Um, and it's like a two hour drive there and back, and the truck will get without loaded without anything in the truck it'll get 20 to 22 miles per gallon um with the tailgate down and having the stand i'm not sure what i'll get but i typically use um, a tank of gas to go there and back but um all right let's keep rolling along All right, I'm back. And the first thing I do when I get back is I wash my hands before I do anything around the house. Um, I've been out now for a couple hours running the errands and I'm going to spend a few minutes with my pups. And then we'll keep moving along on stuff to do. Yep. All right, so the next thing I have to do, I don't know why this light just turned on. This is a half inch bulkhead. This is what I'm using on the better racks for the overflows. I need to design a strainer. So this would be on the inside of the tank. I need to design a strainer in CAD and then 3D print one to basically make sure fish don't try to go in this hole. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I have an inside diameter of 21.3 millimeters, so that's what I'll use to start the design. 
All right, this might be hard to show because I'm video recording the computer screen, but this is the start of the strainer, and I'll just kind of show you. It's 21.2 is what I'm going with for the diameter, and it's 20 inches or 20 millimeters tall, which means this will slide in 20 millimeters. Uh, so it's going to, I don't know if I can focus this. So it's going to go like that into it 20 millimeters, and then I need to put like a mesh screen on it. All right, this is the design I kind of came up with. Um, these are the holes for the water to flow through. And I just put like a little bit of a lip so this will stop it from going too far in. The height of it's like a millimeter short of how far it can really go in. And if it's not a super snug fit, I'm not too worried about it. Um, worst case, I can put like a little piece of uh, paper or foil on the top edge, which would be above the water line to really snug it up. But it shouldn't be an issue. Um, there's not going to be a high amount of water flow, so this should work. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out and get it printing. Um, I always do a quick print to see, um, kind of like a prototype to make sure it works, because a lot of the times, you know, I have what I think is a good dimension. Once I go to try it, it's wrong. So I'll get this printed out and see how it works. All right, it's printing. I think it said it's gonna take like 25 minutes to uh, print this off. So I, it's doing that. I'll go and find some other things to do. All right, while that uh, overflow strainer is 3D printing, I'm gonna make some packages up for my pipettes. I buy these like 500 at a time. Um, I had them individually on the website for 25 cents a piece and then I decided it would be just easier to sell them as a group of four for a dollar. And I don't like just throwing these into a box loose. So I put them in a plastic bag and I have to make my own bags. Um, like I said, because these come just in a bulk box of like 500. So I'm going to show you how I make bags for these. All right. So here's the heat sealer. This is one of the four mil thick um, bags I use for fish and it's been cut down. And instead of it just putting four of the pipettes in this bag, it actually would waste a lot. So I actually end up splitting this bag in half. And the way I do that is I center it on here and then I heat seal it. And at the same time, I pull on it and that basically separates this into two bags. All right, there was no way I could record that one handed because you have to press down on this kind of hard to activate it. And you have to use your second hand to kind of pull on it. So this is what I end up with. So it's the same bag, just split in half. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the pipettes in it. So I stagger which way they fit in there and that gives them uh, the best space. And I just slide them in. And then I heat seal the end of it. And that's what I end up with. So it's sealed on the top and on the side. Now I have a bag of four and then I can toss this into a box whenever somebody buys it. And I figured the four is better anyway. So you could have one for like Hikari Ick X. Um, I use one for dosing live bacteria into the tanks. And I put one milliliter of live bacteria. I use the Fritz Zyme 7. Um, whenever I ship fish, I put a little live bacteria because that's going to help eat any ammonia during shipping and it's just another uh, improved practice i'm doing while shipping fish so i'm gonna make i try to make like at least 10 of these at a time and then um that way i have them ready to go whenever somebody orders them all right let's knock out daily water changes of the import rack system and because i've been importing fish and using my flow through system I'm gonna show you guys how I do the water change on that. It's super easy, and um, let me flip you around and I'll show you how that works. 
All right, so here's the flow through system. To change water, I put it on feed just to kind of equalize the tanks out on the bottom. Turn the pump back on. And then this valve right here, just toys it open. I can't go full, full bore on it. But it's gonna fill up this bucket. It's gonna activate the float switch right there. And then uh, that's it. So now water is pumping out of, let me zoom out, pumping out of the bottom rack. It's going into the sump. And the sump's sending it up over and down to the drain. So I'll let that sit for, I mean, it only takes like two minutes and it, it'll drain off. You know, you can drain 50 gallons, 100 gallons, however much I want. Uh, well, actually, the maximum amount I can technically drain right now is whatever is in the bottom, which is 100 gallons. But that's all right. 100 gallons would be, uh, let's say, 40% of the water. So I'm going to let that drain down and get ready to do the import rack. All right, the water level's down. So now I'm going to turn off the drain. So now it's no longer draining out. And then this is the fill. So I just open that valve, the water comes down. And it starts filling up the tanks. So I go until these tanks kind of level out. They kind of do a tier system as far as water levels all the way across, but um, I'll keep my eye on this and once the water level's up where I want it, I just turn off the fill. All right, here's another project I wanna knock out before I do the water change on the import rack. This is my waste pump. This is my new one. Um, I got a little bit bigger one. This is a quarter horsepower. This is what you would see like in a house. It's cast iron or metal. Um, I normally just turn it on, but I want to put a float switch on it so that way I can just hardwire this and not worry about it. And this is the same float switch I use on the flow through rack drain that you guys just saw. And this is the brand, it's Superior Pump. This is the same one that's on the other sump pump, and I haven't had any issue with it. So um, I got this off Amazon. So if anybody's looking for a float switch, this is what I'm using. And I think that's the same brand as this pump. Yeah, Superior Pump. Both of these are from Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. It's super easy. It just uses a hose clamp, a worm drive to attach to the pump. And then it's got, this is the switch unit. And there should be, where's the float? Oh, it's over here. And this is the float. So when it goes down, it turns off. When it goes up, it turns the pump on. All right, it's on, so water level down. As the float rises, clicks it on, water level goes down, turns it off. There's not much stroke to this. Um, I could mount this further up the line, like once I have the hose, but I swap the hose between the waste pump and the fresh water pump, so I can't mount it to the hose. So it's going to be, it could technically be cycling a lot, but it'll be all right. All right, the 3D print's done. It's pretty stuck. Let me, uh, this is a like magnetic base, so you can peel it off. Once again, I'm trying to do this one-handed. There we go. Let's see if it fits the bulkhead. All right, here's one of the beta tanks. Um, it's only one coat of paint. I use a brush, so it's kind of crappy. Um, I'm honestly not too worried about it, but let's see if this fits. This is the prototype, so you know I kind of measure things out, but sometimes I don't get it right, so we'll see. Oh. 
Awesome, fit perfect. So there's my uh, strainer for the overflow. That will keep the fish from getting down in there. So I'm almost out of black filament on this spool. So normally I would go, go through and redo the CAD drawing to have it print like, let's say like six of those at a time. It still takes the same amount of time. So if it takes 25 minutes, a overflow, I'm timing that by six. But the thing is I can like set it, hit print six, and then I can walk away and then it'll do six while I'm doing other stuff. But because I'm out of almost out of that filament, I'm going to print one at a time until I can fully use up that spool so that way I'm not wasteful. Because if it runs out in the middle of printing six of them, then I'm shit out of luck. Sorry. But I'm just going to keep printing, printing them one off at a time while I do other stuff. So I just finished that float switch on the sump pump, check the print, it's done. And now I'm going to do water changes. Actually, I'm sweating because my fish room's like 75 degrees and it's humid as heck. And I don't like being hot, so I sweat. Um, I haven't eaten anything yet today, and it's uh, 5, 5.20ish. So I'm going to eat dinner and then do the water changes. All right, so I totally forgot I was uh, making dinner. Uh, I fed my dogs and I looked at the clock and I realized it was almost six o'clock. So I do orders twice a day. Uh, during the week when I'm normally working, I do them on my lunch break. And majority of my orders come in in the evening or overnight. So on my lunch break, I pack them and then I take them to the post office. So that's what I did this morning at the beginning of this video. And then anything that comes in between my lunch break and like five o'clock, I shipped those out same day too. So I went to check my orders. I had only one order, but it was for four, it was for 10 packs of my alder cones. Cool, except for I didn't have 10 packs available, um, like pre-made up is what I mean. So I had to sit there and bag up, I think it was like six or seven of the big bags of alder cones. I heat seal the tops and then I gotta label them. So, and then I didn't have enough labels, so I had to get more labels. And then I was in a rush. I got to the post office in time. I didn't record anything just because I was in a rush and I didn't even think about it. I just wanted to get the order out. So that's done. Now I'm back to do the water change. Okay, so to change the water, this is the, what I've, I've always called the import tanks or the import rack. Um, this is all manually done. So this is the waste bucket. The sump pump, which I just put that float on, is in there. And then this hose comes and goes into the drain. This is from the other rack system. So I had to take that out, put this one in. That's a Python hook. Um, and then when I'm done, I had to put this back in. And hopefully I never forget or I'd flood my room. But now I'm ready to start draining these tanks down. All right, these are the three... Um, siphons I use to drain the tanks. This one has a 90 and you'll see that in a second why. And one of these is long and one is short. And I just hang them here when I'm done. It's what's kind of nice about these concrete blocks. You can hang stuff. There's one of my specimen containers um, that I use to pull fish. So let me get a couple of these tanks going and you'll see everything in action. All right, so all I do is hook the tank. There's one of the 3D strainer, 3D printed strainers I made. And then I just start the siphon into the bucket. And then right now I would be setting up the other two. So let me get that going. All right, now I got three. Sorry it's loud, you got the water rushing in, and the pumps running. So the short one is for the middle rack. The long one's for the top rack. And the one the 90 is for the two tanks on the end. But if I wasn't recording, I just, I blow through this really quick. So I'm gonna go through and drain all these tanks. All right, that pump's keeping up, so that's great. And you know, I just started this, you know, a minute and a half ago. So that tank's draining, that one's draining, that one's draining. So all I got left is this one. 
And then to speed up the process on the last one, I just put two in it. And this is why I have the strainer. You can see there's fry in this tank. All right, that's done. There's water left in the bottom. It's always gonna have a little bit left. If I don't want that in there, I just take the bucket out the back door and dump it out in the garden. But now I gotta take this hose off and put it onto this pump. Okay, first thing I do is I put some water in this bucket, some fresh water, and I purge this line out of the waste water. So um, I normally activate this with my phone, but since I'm recording, I'm just gonna manually turn that guy on, just this one. So now it's flushing out this garden hose line. And once that's flushed, I move this hose over to this storage. This is the only way I get water to this tank. Come over here. So the reason why this, how I have this is, I didn't have this tank before I had these. This tank was enough to water change everything I needed, but now that I'm doing you know, multiple systems, I needed more physical water. Because this water that comes in from over here is cold water, goes through my carbon blast, which is, it's a carbon filter and a sediment filter. This first one is just a pre-filter, then goes through a carbon filter and that removes the chlorine or chloramine from the water. It pumps into this barrel and then it sits up high in the room because that's where the heat is and it just, uh, we could call it aging, but it just sits there basically for 24 hours and the room itself heats that water up and it matches these tanks. Well, since I had to add this in to increase my water volume, I have to pump water from this sump into there when I'm done to fill this up so it room acclimates overnight. And because it's lower in the ground, it takes longer. So I actually have a heater in there too. That's what this cable is right here. There's like a 200 watt heater that sits in there just to help speed up the process so say if I need to do a full water change at night, I usually do it um, after I get home from work. And let's say for whatever reason I need extra water uh, in the morning, this will always be ready with that heater. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And I, I pre-made all this when I built this first rack system. I originally did it so I could have a bucket to take water into the house. And actually, I almost made, made a mistake. That barrel's full right now. I need to start filling up tanks first before I start putting water into it. And the way this works is it's got a, I think it's a, a half horsepower sump pump in the bottom. And I use these Flexzilla garden hoses. They're very flexible and, so they, and they don't kink. But basically I made my own Python hook um, you know, basically the same concept as that. I made this before I end up carrying these. Um, obviously I just use these now. It's way easier and it's a smoother transition. Um, but I just basically hook this onto each tank and fill it up. And that's another thing that I use my Wi-Fi switches for. So I just use my phone to turn the tanks on and off. So I want to set you down for a second and start filling some tanks. But before I do that, um, this is a, I think this is 75 feet or a hundred foot hose. I use this to fill the tanks in the house. So I don't have to carry buckets into the house anymore. There's the 75 gallon in there, the 30 or well, 29 gallon, um, 20 long. There's a five gallon, a 10 gallon. Like, you know, there's, there's six tanks inside. I can just walk in, go to the 75 gallon, hook this on it, use my cell phone to activate this pump. That's why I love having everything on Wi-Fi switches. So I can do all my wire changes in the house doing the same method. But all right, let me, uh, let me hook this onto a tank and get it going. All right, so there it is. It's hooked on the tank. It's adding water. Pump's just pumping it through the hose. And it's at actually a pretty decent flow rate. 
if I had a shorter hose, it would fill up a lot quicker, but I don't want to really disturb everything too much. The clean glass obviously is where the water constantly hits, and you can see it's you know knocking some mulm around, and it kind of ends up pushing all the mulm to the back, which I'm all right with. And this is the time of my day where I start looking at the fish and seeing how they're doing. If uh, a fish happens to die for whatever reason, this is when I would pull it out of the tank. And this is when I'm looking for like any kind of issues of ick, um, any kind of issues with like fish, fish swimming weird, you know, just the, the normal stuff. So this is the time that I do it. And there's no fish in that last tank, those are plants. So I'm not water changing that daily. Um, right now, there's no fish in it. It's only going to get a weekly water change. You know, you can see the cardinals. And you get some more snails into this tank because the algae's growing on the glass. You know, this one too. And then once the mom built, mom is great for the tanks. I don't mind it. Um, but once it starts building up quite a bit, I will siphon it out using the Python siphon. Um, oh, well, there you guys go. You made a mess. Wasn't paying attention. So <laughs> glad I got that on video though. So I just overfilled this. I need to siphon some of this out, but um, this is how I fill the tanks. And let me pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't make another mistake. But um, I'm going to finish filling the rest of these tanks. All right, this is where I have to really pay attention. All the tanks are filled. I corrected the level on this tank. This water, as it gets colder, because now I'm pumping in fresh water to the up, upstairs tank, the upper tank, this pump doesn't pump as fast once this water starts getting cold. So I have to kind of manipulate this bubble valve just like that, just to slow this flow down. Because if not, after a while, this will overflow. And Lucas Bretz was here when that overflowed when i wasn't in the fish room we were in my family room and i just barely heard a noise that didn't sound normal to me and i opened the door and that thing was flooding out this area so that was that was the first time i, I ever ran into that issue because i left it full open and the pump didn't keep up with it and then after a while it just started overflowing i cleaned up this water that overflowed from this tank i typically keep the water level at the line of the plastic the Daniels are jumpers so if you can see right there it's just a little bit below the black plastic line and now this is when I take the time to really look at everybody does anybody have ick you know like I mentioned earlier this is the time to check out how everybody's doing I don't see any issues with any of the fish everybody's actually look like looks like they're doing really well the only ones that are hard to keep an eye on are the Dessa barbs because they sit all the way in the back. Um, I had really heavy losses on those when they came in, but this group that's back there now, I haven't had any losses. The only thing that sucks is, like I said, they're always in the back. And you can see there's two Danios in here. They were actually from this tank. They hopped over. So now they're separated from all their buddies. So at this point, is now when I feed everybody. All right, so I, I started using this after uh, Lucas Brett's always talked about the Tetracolor Tropical Granules. This is a very cost effective way to feed a full fish room. If I just had a single tank, I probably would use like targets, like species specific foods, but this stuff's really good. Um, I buy this stuff by the case and one of these jars might last, um, I don't know, three weeks or so, but uh, this is what I feed all the tanks, and that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so everybody's fed. I didn't feed the cichlids because I want to get that on video because those guys are fun to watch. I'm filling up the tank. There's a line right, right there. That's my fill line. That's where I stop, and all these fish look good. All those fish look good. This tank, this has the clown pluckos I ordered in. And it looks like they might have ick, so I'm about to treat them with the Hikari Ick X. So this is also a time I do my medications if needed, and I'm going to treat this tank. 
All right, you can actually see the couple of the pluckos. There's actually three right here. Um, I have this little slot. This is a matte and filter tank. This is one of the, this is the first rack I ever built and one of the first tanks I ever set up. But I just drop in the Hikari Ikex in this slot. The uh, uplift tube pulls it up and then it'll start pushing out into the tank. So that's treated. And um, yeah. All right, I know this is gonna be hard to see because of the reflection on the glass. I wanna show you. I take a handful. I only feed my fish once a day. Oh well, yeah, they're already at the surface, like piranhas. I can't, I need a, well, hang on, let me see if I can turn off the light. Guess it helps a little bit, but they're clearing that out. All the food that hits the bottom, they just sit there and peck at it, just like this guy right here. But these guys eat a ton. And this is a cool tank because it's only 10 gallons and there's over 100 fish in here. And, you know, it is the flow through, so there is 260 gallons of water. It's just fun to watch. Especially when you feed them, they... they they're like piranhas, you know, they just ball up and they go after it. This is going to be a long video. I thought it wouldn't be that long, just kind of like vlogging a day in the life of SC. But it's uh, 7 p.m. now and uh, almost 7. I'm hot from being in the fish room. So this is typically the part of the night where I relax for about an hour. Um... I'm with the, the pups, the other one's over here, and uh, let me show you what I'm going to relax to. Aquarium Co-op goes live in like 15 minutes. Uh, so, uh, Charlotte, she can't hear me, but um, yeah, so I'm going to relax for a little bit, cool off. And then this is when I would get on the computer and edit videos or place orders for products or fish, respond to emails or instant messages. I get a lot of messages through like um, Facebook Messenger through the um, SC Aquatics uh, page. And um, yeah, so I usually relax for a little bit. I don't get to watch as much youtube as i used to just because i'm so busy and this is me not working at the shop this week this is just doing the normal activities um like the tractor supply run i would do that like on my lunch break if if i could fit it in go to tractor supply come home eat lunch let the dogs out pack orders run to the post office and then get back to work but um yeah so i need to do the emails and all that fun stuff and then i still want to continue working on the beta rack and beta rack beta beta um the beta rack i want to get that sand that i bought today into some of the tanks and see how it looks and i really want to get the water flowing and put a poly pad in it to filter out like that sand dust and um yeah because i really want that rack up and running by this weekend because i want to get those fish online i've had a few people say they want to get some so we'll see if they get some or not but we'll just keep plugging along all right moving right along um in case you wanted to know how much 50 pounds of the diamond black blasting sand is that much in a bucket um this is the fine and they have like a medium uh version this fine is very fine uh, it might be hard to see, you know, on camera, it looks like it might be medium, but it's, it's very soft feeling too. Um, but it's fine, but it's super dusty. So be prepared for this to cloud your water unless you really, really rinse it very, very well. Um, my plan is to just set it in the tanks and then I'm going to add the water to it. And I'm going to put a poly pad in the sump to catch all the dust. And I'm going to let that cycle until the water clears out. Oh, and I just put these lights up. So they're just hung up with the chain through the rack. 
Um, I'm gonna mount a power strip to the side and um, just plug them all in. And yeah, so I got lights. The lights are done. I'm printing off some more strainers and then I need to put the power head down there and see if it's powerful enough to loop the water through. And I got Aquarium Co-op, he's live right now, so I'm listening to him while I work. All right, so my break is like about over. I've been listening to Aquarium Co-op's live stream. I'm about to put sand in the bed of tanks. And um, I think I'll probably call that quits for tonight. I answered emails and messages. And I'm just having some, this is like deer meat sausage that I was given to by Mikey LeMay. So thank you. There's a shout out for you. Um, it's very good. But um, I'm, I'm hitting a wall. I'm getting very tired. It's 8.45 almost. And um, yeah, just let's keep moving. All right, so I got them plugged into the power strip. I need to mount the power strip to the rack. I went ahead and put sand. This is that black blasting stand. Um, it looks pretty good, it's very fine, so I know it's gonna make a mess. I put the strainers in, all the overflows. That's them guys right there. And um, now I just gotta work on the actual water pump side of it. So I think I'm going to do that now all right so this is how i think i'm gonna run the sump this is a 10 gallon matten filter i saw these on the website um just running a hose through the hole to a power head i'm using this to hold the power head off the bottom of the glass that way i don't have any vibrations um it's going to help keep this in place and then this hose should where is it? Uh, right next to that two inch pipe, there's a barb fitting. Uh, right there. And that's going to be the fresh water up. Now, I have this big piece of foam. Um, this is very coarse. I'm going to use this as like a pre filter. So that's going to go like right here pre-filter i'm going to drop in poly pads and i think between the poly pads and this i have a bunch of uh micro like bio balls i'm just going to fill that up and um call that good and then i'll be able to uh do water changes just by pulling water out of the sump and then filling up the sump so that's how i plan on doing this all right this is kind of what i have come up with Super coarse. It's a, like metal mat. Um, this is supposed to be replaceable, like a pond filter. Um, it's pretty coarse. It's less coarse than that, but I'm just using that as a second layer. Um, another metal mat. Two layers of the poly fleece. Uh, it's like poly filled mat. This is going to be disposable for me. Um, this is what I'll pull out to remove the fine stuff goes into another metal mat and this was i made these these pieces and i still have this left over from that one piece that was sitting there and then in down in this channel i'm putting 400 of these bio balls i think i put some in there already these are mini i brought these in months and months ago kind of as a product test um it's just like a regular bio ball and I don't think you'll be able to see it on the inside of this is actually a little piece of sponge so this just gives it more surface area for bacteria to grow on um, these are mini and i brought these in because i thought this might be something good that you could hot rod some canister filters or hang on the back filters stuff like that but i'm about to put 400 in there and then goes through the final matten filter the pump is off the bottom and I just got to hook this up. I hope this pump is powerful enough. I, I, I'm a little bit nervous now that I'm thinking about the height that this pump is going to have to try to pump water. I don't think it will be able to do it now. But there's only one way to find out. So I'm going to get at it. 
And then this, I think I'm going to cut and lay these flat in here to buffer the water sound of the water coming back into this tank. But uh, that's where I'm at. All right, so I, I got everything kind of pushed where it needs to go. Um, I have the water line hooked up to the upflow pipe. And I just realized before I can put water in it and test to see if that power head is powerful enough, I need to actually run the water lines to the tanks. I already flooded my house once today, so I don't want to do it again. I think I'm going to call it quits. It's 930. I feel like I got quite a bit done today. I still have a long list of stuff. Today's Thursday. I'm going to edit this video now. Uh, it's probably going to take me an hour just to edit it. And then it's got render probably for a few hours because there's a lot of video. And then I want to get to bed and wake up in the morning and start back at it again. So if you guys have made it to this part in the video, thank you so much for watching. I'm just, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm ready to get out of these clothes, take a shower, relax, and go to bed. And I'm going to Ohio Fish Rescue tomorrow too, so... Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching. I, I've kind of lost my spunk now, I'm sure, but um, thank you for watching. Keep tanking along, all that fun stuff. And I'll uh, keep updating this video or this rack system as I get things done on it. But um, see you guys.